Hello everyone. Welcome to the MidSpeed Live class. We'll go ahead and get started and I will mute everyone. That way if somebody comes in and we don't get interrupted. All right, here we go. Ready? Away, again, off. Home, big, give. Sound below, saw. Going, want, school. Important until form. Something, thought, both. Airline set, went old number, own under read, few those always, great tell men, say small every, last never us, looked show large, often together asked, left end along, found still between, name should mister, while might next, House don't world, food keep children, feet land side, without boy once, animals life enough, took sometimes four, head above kind, lights parts country, days ever paper, father let night, hard near sentence, better best across. Following picture being, began almost live, page got earth, steady second eyes, during today others, however sure means, soon time story, need far hand, high year mother, boys since white, knew its try. Let's do some phrases that are often spoken. Here we go. Don't open the door, add it up, between the lines, along the way, plants and flowers, something good, plant the trees, those other people, in my head, we left it here, close the door, Always be kind. It never happened. Once upon a time. We walked four miles. Let me carry it. Stop the music. The young face. State your case. I cut myself. On my side. The peaceful people. The young girl. The tall mountains. A good idea. A long life, I hear the sea, white clouds, almost four miles. All right. Let's do some various descriptions using numbers and initials. Here we go. 4.3 liter Vortec engine. New Tour Guide Ultra GL 1500 SE, the Sporty CBX 150, and the NX 150, 16 valve DOHC power plant. Retail price from $164.95 to $185.98. Tack steady at 12,000 RPMs. Performance shocks at $345.95 per pair. 32 to 45 miles per gallon, 39.1 miles per gallon average. 485 to 512 pound capacity. 5.53 by 73.8 inch cast aluminum. 2015 Sprint FC priced at $31,198.46. 500 CC Grand Prix point standings. Finished 13th on a new R100 
RT. 2018 Silver Gray CBR 1000F Honda. 29.7 feet by 63.9 feet by 7.1 feet. Bank balance reached $569.72. Central LCD display. 63 easy to use gizmos. All right. Here are some words that end with SH and CH. Here we go. Wish, which. Lash, latch. Mash, match. Dish, ditch. Hush, hutch. Hash, hatch. Rush, reach. Bash, batch. Wash, watch. Posh, pitch. Cash, catch. Fish, fetch. Nash, touch. Push, peach. Bash, beach. Dash, bitch. Flash, leech. Stash, stitch. Gosh, dutch. Trash, peach. Slash, hitch. Blush, blotch. Splash, splotch. Mush, notch. Sash, such. Clash, clutch. Stash, stitch. Leash, botch. Crash, crutch. Rash, rich. All right. I've got some Jelly Belly official 50 flavors. Here we go. A and W cream soda, A and W root beer, berry blue, blueberry, bubble gum, buttered popcorn, cantaloupe, cappuccino, caramel corn, chili mango, chocolate pudding, cinnamon, coconut, cotton candy, crushed pineapple, Dr. Pepper, French vanilla, green apple, island punch, Juicy pear, kiwi, lemon drop, lemon lime, licorice, mango, margarita, mixed berry smoothie, orange sherbet, peach, pina colada, plum, pomegranate, raspberry, red apple, sizzling cinnamon, sour cherry, strawberry cheesecake, strawberry daiquiri, Strawberry jam, sun-kissed lemon, sun-kissed lime, sun-kissed orange, sun-kissed pink grapefruit, sun-kissed tangerine, toasted marshmallow, top banana, tutti fruity, berry cherry, watermelon, wild blackberry. Let's do some car accident briefs. And you should you probably know these are pretty they're pretty standard, but if you have any questions about them, you can email me and I will give them to you, okay? Here we go. Driveway, highway, roadway, speed limit, stop sign, scene of the accident, skid mark, ambulance, passenger, window, Vehicle, stoplight, street light, red light, green light, yellow light, brake light, flashing light, traffic light, vehicle, motorcycle, before the accident, after the accident, intersection, parking lot, seat belt, rear view mirror, side view mirror, impact, Point of impact, after the impact, before the impact, SUV, freeway, collision, southbound, westbound, northbound, eastbound, accident, windshields, traffic, 
after the impact, before the impact, point of impact. And uh, I'll give you those just in case you don't know them. After the impact is A-E-K-T. Before the impact is B-E-K-T. Point of impact, P-O-I-K-T. All right. Let's do some medical words. Here we go. Descending ramus, expanding portion, juncture point, rounded protuberance, straightening limbs, center line, patellar tendon, impacted fracture, inflammatory disease, ionization chambers, remaining constant, commonly applied, healing process, measuring instrument, prescribed exercises, operative reduction, under anesthesia, diminishing quantities. Let's do some names and addresses. Here we go. Ready? Bernadine F. Steichlin, S-T-E-C-K-L-E-I-N, Kaiser Foundation Health Plan, 600 Grant Street, Denver, Colorado, 80203. Ms. Arlena M. Bannon, B-A-N-N-O-N, -N -O -N, 908 East Penn Road, Hoopston, Illinois, 60942. Patrick H. Kruger, K-R-U-E-G-E-R, -E -E Presto Products, P.O. Box 2390. Appleton, Wisconsin, four, or excuse me, five, four, nine, one, three. Carlos C. Caduff, C A D U F F, 415 Van Dyke Street, St. Paul, Minnesota, 55119. Sarah Jane Werner, W E R N E R. 325 River Drive, Appleton, Louisiana, 70915. Sheila A. Graham, G R A H A M, P.O. Box 883, Rye, Texas, 77369. Samuel L. Jarrett, J A R R E T T, 58 Michaels Street, Hackensack, New Jersey, 07601. Ryder R. Clark, C L A R K, Route 1, Box 39, Sprout Spring, Virginia, 24593. Cynthia B. Tanner, T A N N E R, Allstate Insurance, 500 Oak Lane, Northbrook, Illinois, 60062. All right. We're going to end here with some common phrases. Here we go. You're gonna phrase as much as possible. I have been, I can't have been, it would have been, may have been, might have been, must have been, shall have been, she's been, should have been, so I have been. 
So you have been, that have been, there have been, they have been, to have been, we have been, what I have been, what you have been, when I have been, when you have been, where I have been, where you have been, whether I have been, whether or not I have been, whether or not you have been, whether you have been, which have been, which I have been, which you have been, who have been, will have been, would have been, you have been, before the, can believe, can he believe, can you believe, could believe, could have believed, did he believe, did I believe, does he believe, do I believe, do you believe, he believed, he believes, I believe, I believe so, I believed, I can't believe. All right. Now I've got one last drill that I almost forgot about. These are sentences that end with final SK. So we're going to use our FK for the SK words. Here we go. Come bask in the Florida sunshine till dusk. Each newcomer was assigned a task with a mask. He filled the flask from a large cask. A whisk broom will clean the corners. He kept his mask in the desk drawer. Most cars have discs brakes. A herniated disc can be painful and risky. The brisk breeze blew until dusk. A corn husk is a tamale wrapper. The musk ox, like the elephant, has a tusk. Seafood lovers are mollusk hunters. When in India, you must visit a mosque. The word basque reminds me of France. Mollusks don't have tusks and whiskers. The police whisked him to jail. His task was to make a mask. He hid the flask in his desk. Use a whisk broom to clean the cask. This is a tusk taken from a musk ox. They were brusque as they performed the task. All right, let's move on to literary. Now we're going to finish this legal opinion that we started the other day. We got about halfway through, so we're gonna finish that. Here we go, ready? In regard to plaintiff's discharge, Dr. Kelly testified that plaintiff stated her husband could not pick her up until later in the day. And Dr. Kelly indicated that this would be no problem. Dr. Kelly informed the attending nurses that plaintiff would be leaving sometime later in the day. Dr. Kelly stated further that he had no knowledge of how patients leave the hospital specifically on a specific patient. It was Dr. Kelly's understanding that the normal course would be that someone would accompany the patient to the first floor or to the car. That was his understanding and has been his experience. When asked if he was familiar with defendant's discharge policies, Dr. Kelly replied, the specific policies 
No, but the normal policy that somebody would accompany a patient, yes, I am familiar with that policy, but I haven't studied the book of policies. At the close of plaintiff's evidence, the trial court denied defendant's motion for a directed verdict. Mary Cook, the attending nurse, testified for defendant that she observed plaintiff walking without difficulty on the day of her discharge. At about 9 a.m., Dr. Kelly had informed Cook that plaintiff could not get a ride home until later in the day. Shortly after 10 o'clock, Cook was surprised to see plaintiff walking down the hall on her way out of the hospital. Plaintiff was accompanied by two nurses who were carrying plaintiff's bags and purse. Plaintiff held the arm of one of them. Cook, who was on her way to charge an IV for a patient or change, asked if plaintiff needed assistance, and plaintiff replied that she did not need any help. Cook told plaintiff that if she could wait a minute, Cook would be right back. When Cook returned, plaintiff was gone. Cook testified that it was defendant's general policy to walk with the patient to her car. This policy was established to protect both patient and the hospital personnel. Cook did not discuss discharge procedure with plaintiff prior to her leaving because she had not expected plaintiff to leave so early. Ann Parker, an emergency room nurse for defendant, testified for defendant that she treated plaintiff in the emergency room on the night of June 4, approximately 12 hours after plaintiff was discharged. Plaintiff told Parker that she had fallen in the hospital lobby that morning and that she was not alone at the time, but had been accompanied by two men. Plaintiff complained of pain and bleeding, but did not complain of other injuries as a result of the fall. The trial court denied defendant's motion for a directed verdict as to count two at the close of all the evidence. When the jury was unable to reach a decision, defendant moved for a judgment notwithstanding the jury's inability to arrive at a verdict. The trial court stated that it had erred in not previously directing a verdict at the close of plaintiff's evidence. All right. Let's do some jury charge. Get down on time. All right, the subject here is accident. I'm going to start at 120 and I will work my way to 160. Here we go, ready? Ladies and gentlemen, if on the other hand, you believe that it was an independent person, a person who was not under the control of the defendant corporation, not an agent, servant, or employee, then it would be your duty to find that the defendant was not liable because the defendant corporation has the right to assume that a stranger going down into the cellar to open the doors would act with due regard to the rights of third persons and would not open a door negligently from the inside, but would merely loosen the bolts and then come through the store out onto the pavement. So the issue for you to determine is, do you believe that it was an agent, servant, or employee of the defendant corporation who opened that door? Or do you believe that it was an independent contractor, a stranger, as Mr. Bradford intimated that he believed it was? 
you should also consider whether the plaintiff herself acted as a reasonably careful person would act under the circumstances. She had a perfect right to walk on any part of that pavement. The iron doors were flush with the pavement when they were closed, and she had a perfect right to walk across those iron doors when they were level with the pavement, as she had the right to assume that nobody would suddenly and without warning open any part of that door to create an obstruction immediately in her path. If you are satisfied that the plaintiffs have established their case by a fair preponderance of the evidence and have met the burden of proof, which is upon them, that an agent, servant, or employee of the defendant corporation opened that door negligently, and if you feel that the plaintiff herself did not contribute by her own negligence to cause the accident, it would be your duty to find a verdict for the plaintiff against the defendant corporation. If, on the other hand, you believe that it was not an agent, servant, or employee of the defendant corporation that caused the accident, that some third person over whom the defendant corporation had no control or no right to control caused the accident, then your verdict should be for the defendant corporation. If you find for the plaintiff, you should consider the measure of damages. Use your common sense and sound judgment. We have had no medical testimony of an affirmative character. The plaintiff tells us that she was taken to the hospital by somebody whose name she does not know, but the hospital records are not produced. She said she was in the hospital for six hours, that she was instructed to ice her face with a compact because she said her left cheek was swollen under her eye. She said that her left side, the left side of her abdomen, pained her. She said they x-rayed it. Well, the hospital records have not been produced. She said she had a doctor, her own doctor, who she went to see, and on his instructions, she stayed in bed for several days. That doctor isn't produced because we are told he is in the military service. She said she went to another doctor. She had another doctor to see her at once. He is not here because he is also in the service, she tells us. We have no testimony other than her own to the fact that she suffered pain in her left side and still suffers pain in bad weather since the accident although she was in good condition prior to the accident. She tells us that she had a bill of $208 from one doctor and she paid $112 to the other doctor. Then she tells us she also was instructed to have some x-rays taken and we had the x-ray expert testify. He tells us that while he took some x-rays back in December of last year, and again in October of this year, all of those x-rays were negative, that there were no fractures, nothing pathological, nothing abnormal shown, which would cause any pain. Nevertheless, the patient told him that there was tenderness in the left side of her abdomen. As I said, use your common sense and sound judgment. You should also bear in mind that the x-ray doctor said his bills for these x-rays were $530 and $620 respectively, a total of $1,150. If you consider that those x-ray pictures were reasonably necessary and that those charges are a fair and reasonable charge, then you would have a right to compensate the plaintiff, Ella Sweeney, to the extent of the $1,150,
and also to the extent of the other medical bills, the $208 and the $112, to which there was testimony, if you believe these bills were fair and unreasonable. All right. Let's go ahead and start some Q&A. All right, we're going to start at 120 and work our way to 160. All right, here we go. Looks like plaintiff is questioning, and we've been working on this transcript for a while. It is a court transcript. Here we go. So do they continue to this day to state that when during your visitation with you, quite regular, and do you hear it from both children? That's the first time I had ever heard it from Mr. And Mr. is, is this Evan? Yes, we call Evan Mr. Thank you. How old was Evan when you first heard it from him? How old was he? Yes, the age he is now, he's two. And so they've been saying this for quite some time, correct? Yes, they have. And the first time that they called you into their room, when you put them to sleep and you turned off the light, that was the first time you heard this statement. Is that correct? Yes, that was the first time. And was that their, what was their demeanor when they told you this? It was like, to me, it was like somebody told them to say it when I put them in the bed. This, the way that I gathered it, because no sooner I turned the light out, they didn't want to go to bed. It was like somebody told them to say this when I put them in the bed. You know, that's when you'd hear it. I'm going to move to strike as non-responsive. It doesn't answer the question about demeanor. Sustained and granted. When they told you this, did Lauren in your mind's eye express any fear? Yes. Did Mr. express any fear? Yes. Have you had an opportunity within the past year to see mother with her children? No, I beg your pardon. I take that back. Objection, no question pending. Overruled, you may answer. I saw, yeah, we went to the mall when they was having visits with their mother at the mall, at the Galleria Mall, with my son. That's when I seen her with the kids. When was that approximately? That was this year, I'm guessing, but I think it was this year. Your son was not incarcerated at the time? No, he wasn't. In order to put a time on it, do you recall when he became incarcerated? Last year, I don't remember the date. Has he been incarcerated all of 2015? No, not that I'm aware of. Thank you, continue. Well, you do agree with me that these statements that the children made to you about the incident of their mother hitting Mr. That's a serious statement in your mind's eye, is that correct? Very serious. I'm sorry, I didn't understand the question, whose statement? The statement of the children saying that their mother hit. Did Ms. Smith take that seriously? What, other than your, you stated that you felt when you heard the statements that the children were coached, correct? Yes. And what in particular about the statement 
or the way the statement was said or any other perception that you picked up made you feel that the children were coached. Because when I first heard it, I heard it from the foster parents when I told or heard it. And when they told me that, I looked at them and I could just tell that it was a lie, you know. I could just tell it was a lie. And then when I heard it from the kids, it was like a shock, you know. It was, it brought tears to my eyes because it's just not no way in the world, nobody going to do that and not take the kids back to a foster parent's common sense will tell you that. Do you, have you, have you had a good relationship with the foster parents? Yes, I did. And that's what hurts. We're very close. Have you ever observed any type of bias that you feel that the foster parents have toward mother? Yes. And what would that be? They just really dislike her. And how could you, what makes you state that? What specific events that you seen from her or witnessed that make you come to that conclusion? They just really dislike her. They never really talk really bad about her, you know, to me, you know, but I can tell they just really don't like her. You know, I don't know why, you know. I don't know why they don't like her, you know, because I'll say a few things, but I mostly just listen. I mostly just listen, and I don't say too much, but I can really tell that, you know, they don't. They don't care for her. I don't know what it is, you know. I have no further questions. Ms. Maloof, you stated that before the kids said anything about the hitting, you heard it from the foster parents? Yes, I did. Which foster parents? Mayla, the grandkids call her Mayla, but her name is Diane. And where were you when Diane told you this? On the phone. So it wasn't, you didn't actually see her face to face? No, I didn't. If you could just let him finish the question, because the reporter won't be able to take down your answer. Now you said you testified that right away, you never believed it when you were told this by Diane. Is that right? No, I never believed it. And why is that? It just don't make no sense for somebody to have their kids for that short length of time and knowing that they have to bring them back to a foster parent and you know, and knowing that you know that you jeopardizing your kids and you bringing them back to the foster parents, you going to abuse your kids? No. Did you have any reason to believe at that time that Diane would lie to you? At that time? Yes. No. And what, if anything, did you say to Diane after she told you this? Like I said, I just listened. I don't know what to say. It was a shock. And how much time later was it, if you can recall, in weeks or days or what have you, you know, when you first heard the kids talk about this? And, you know, say it. Well, when I came to court and they gave me custody of the kids to keep the kids overnight, like I said, the first time I kept them, they didn't say. It was the second time when I heard this. Okay, but what I'm trying to find out is between the time you talked to Diane on the phone and then the time the kids stayed over the second time. Do you remember what was the time period in between? 
You mean like days and weeks and stuff? Right. It was like I kept the kids the first time I went to court. The next two weeks, I think I had the kids. It was like four weeks. I'll say four weeks in between there. And Lauren was the first one to say anything, right? Yes. And whether Lauren said this to you, you had already in your mind that you didn't believe it, right? Right. And how many times did you ask her who told you to say this? I asked her one time for myself. And then when I called a few of my friends, I said, listen at this here. And she would say it over and over and over. And why did you ask her who told you this versus asking her some other type of questions? Like I said, I didn't believe it. So you didn't ask or didn't bother to look into it further yourself, such as asking her, when did this happen or how did this happen or why? That is right. No, I didn't. I didn't even talk to her about it. And do you know, is Lauren pretty? How old was Lauren at the time when you told this to, she's three now, that's when it happened. And how are her communication skills? Good, real good. Do you know whether she understood your question? Who told you this? Yes, she did. Do you know whether she, there was any possibility that she would confuse it with, who did you tell this to? No, you don't think she would have done that? Well, no. And after Diane told you this on the phone, did you inform the social worker of your belief that Diane was lying to you? No, because after I didn't have the kids and I talked to Michelle a few times, it was just like I was nobody no more. I was, it was like I didn't have nothing to do with the kids no more. Okay, once you started having, you were visiting the kids pretty regularly, right? Uh-huh. And once you had been having overnight visits, did you ever bring it to the social worker's attention? No, I didn't. Did you ever tell anybody else about your suspicions? Just a few of my friends on the phone. You stated when you first heard this from Diane, you could tell right away it was a lie. How could you tell? Like I said, I just didn't believe Diane. Has she lied to you before about anything? No. Can I say something? No, I'm sorry. Just answer the questions. Do you dislike Diane? Just a moment. Your answers must be direct responses to the questions, okay? Okay, fine. Did you have any reason to dislike Diane? No. Were you ever upset that the kids were with somebody else other than yourself? No. And you want the kids to live with you now, correct? Yes. And there was a time when you did have temporary custody of the children, right? Yes. And at the time that you asked for them to be removed, isn't it true that you were having some problems with the mother? Yes. Was she in your, did you tell the social worker that you felt you were being harassed by the mother? Yes, I did. And what is that that the mother was doing that you felt was harassment? Objection, Your Honor, beyond the scope of direct and relevance, or I'm sorry, beyond the scope of any response, counsel. I'm just trying to elicit bias at this time, Your Honor. Objection is overruled. Do you want me to repeat the question? Yes, please. Please do. What was the mother doing or saying to you that you felt was harassment? At the time, we was having problems with her calling the kids at a certain time. And at that time, I had just really gotten the kids and was trying to adjust to the kids. And I also had had a brother that had passed. 
and I was trying to explain to her that my brother had passed to call back, you know, at a certain time. That time wasn't good, and sometimes she would call. The kids would be sleeping. It was late. She would kind of get upset, maybe think I was lying or something like that. And then when she, that didn't bother me until the man called my house. What man called your house? I don't know who he was. A man called and asked for Lauren. And that's what I really, I got upset. I told her that she would have done better asking for the kid herself instead of putting some stranger up to asking for a kid. That wasn't right. And did she do that on more than one occasion? No, just one. And was she also rude or disrespectful to you? Just one time. Did she ever mouth off to you? Just once. Did you think that she had a temper problem or problem controlling her anger? No. Now, when you asked the social worker to remove the kids, you called, your, you called her in tears, right? Yes, I was crying. Was it just due to this one incident? No, it was a lot of things. It had built up. The phone calls, the kids would tell me, later falling down and stuff like that. It would irritate me, you know, a little bit. So there was more than one incident, right? Yes, it was, uh-huh. And isn't it true that there was more than one incident of the mother being rude to you? She might have, she might have been, but it wasn't that often. It was most of the time she would talk, but I was under a lot of pressure. Like I said, my brother had just passed away and everything. All right, so I'm gonna switch transcripts for just a minute. Hi, Olivia. It's great to have you. All right, let's switch transcripts. All right. This is going to be defense questioning. And I got up, just hit 160 in the last one. Okay, so I'll, I'm going to start this one right off at 160. Okay, here we go. Okay. After the first two months, did you feel the same as the first day you went in? Yes. Did your frequency change after the two months? Yes. To what? To moderate pain. No, the frequency is the number of times per week. Yes, it was three times a week. When it changed from five days a week to three times a week, did you feel about the same that you did when you first went in? No. Did you feel better? Yes. How about your shoulders? Did the pain in your shoulders decrease? Yes. Your pain in your back, did that decrease? Slightly. How about your foot pain? It was still there. Did any doctor or healthcare provider prescribe for you any orthopedic device such as a cane, crutch, sling, cast, wheelchair, or anything like that? No, not that I recall. Did they give you any collars to wear, anything like that? No. When you were going three days a week, did what they did to you at each visit change at all from what they did the first two months? Yes. How did it change? My pain started getting to moderate pain. What I'm asking you is, did the treatment change? You told him they gave you electric stimulation, heating pad and stretching. Did they add anything or take any of that treatment away when you went from five to three days? They added the cracking, they cracked my bones. Did they describe these to you? Yes, as chiropractic adjustments, yes. Is that what they said? So is it fair to say at each of these three visits on each week during your third month of treatment, they gave you electric stimulation, 
heat pads, stretching, and chiropractic adjustments? Yes. Did they add anything else? No. Did they take anything away? No. And did that frequency of three times a week change? Yes. And how long did you continue with three days a week? For about a month and a half. And from three days a week, what did it change to? To two times a week. At the time that it changed, had your pain in your shoulders increased or decreased? Decreased. How about your pain in your back? It had decreased too. And the pain in the foot? It was still there. Okay, can you tell me, in terms of that scale we used before, you indicated it was an eight on the morning. It was an eight on the morning for the pain after the accident when you first went to the chiropractor. Can you tell me what the scale would be from one to 10 that you had pain to your shoulders when you first started? It was, it was probably a seven. And how about your back? The same. And your foot? That was probably an eight. And did you hurt anywhere else? My neck. What was that? That was probably an eight. Eight and eight. All right, now when you finished your two months of treatment at five days a week and changed from five to three, can you tell me on the scale of one to 10 what you felt in the shoulders? Probably one less. About six? Six. The same with the back? Yes. That went down to six? Yes. And the foot? Probably still an eight because that was the only thing, part, that would hurt the most. And the neck? Probably a seven. And when you went to two days a week, did they add anything to your treatment? No. Did they take anything away? No. They still gave you electric stimulation, the hot pads, the stretching, and the chiropractic manipulation? Correct. And when you went from three to two, can you tell me on a scale of one to 10 what your pain felt like on your shoulders? On my shoulders? Uh-huh. Probably like around four. And your neck? Like a five. And your back? Like a four. And your foot? Like a six. Can you tell me what kind, if they did any specific treatment to your foot? No, they didn't. So did they massage it? Yes. Did they massage you all over your body? No. Did they apply heat directly to your foot? No. Did they apply cold directly to your foot? No. Did they ever tell you to apply hot or cold to your foot? Yes. <clears throat> what did they tell you? To put it in ice, put ice around it. When did they first tell you to do that? The first time they started doing treatment because it was a bad, deep bruise. Did you do that? Yes, I did. Did that help? Not very much. How often did you put ice on it in the first month of treatment? Probably every day. Were you employed at the time of the accident? No, I wasn't. Did your frequency ever change from two times a week? No. You're still going two times a week? Probably for the last month, I would just go for a day. So you went the last month of treatment. It went from one to two times a week? Yes, or two to one, two to one. Did the treatment change at all? No, it was still the same. During this period of time, did you do anything at home? Did I do anything at home to treat yourself? Just the ice for my foot. As we sit here today, do you have any present complaints of pain or discomfort as a result of this accident? How do your shoulders feel today? Pretty as good as they did before you got in the accident? Yes. How is your neck? Is that as good as it was before the accident? Yes. How about your back? It's good. Same as it was before the accident? Yes. How about your foot? Once in a while, I'll get pain still. 
Can you associate that pain with any particular? It depends upon what certain activity I do. It depends if I put a lot of pressure on it. Okay, what kind of activities do you do that causes it to have pain when I run? How often do you run? Since I used to play soccer, I have to keep myself in shape, so probably twice a week. Do you still, <coughs> still play soccer? No, I don't. You just run. <coughs> yes. When did you start back to running after the accident, or did you ever stop? Yes, I stopped for about seven months. How often do you run now? Probably twice a week. How far do you run? Probably a mile. Oh, my throat is dry today. <coughs> All right, we'll do some read back. Oh. All right. <clears throat> Let me see here. Make sure this is the one I want. Yeah. All right. So this is going to be plaintiff questioning. Okay, I'm going to read it at 160, 140, 120. All right, so 160 first. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Ready? Did he appear to you to be dead at that time? I didn't know whether he was dead or not. I didn't examine him. You just pushed him over in the front seat. Is that right? He was already in the front seat. He was sitting about middle ways. He was close to the steering wheel. So I pushed his body over so that I could get room to drive. Did you notice any blood on the floor in the back of that car? I did not even turn around to look in the car. I just drove the car. Did you notice your hat was in the car? I didn't know anything was in the car at all, but him and me. Now, when did Viola take your hat? She taken my hat the first time that she called me to come over. She threw her arm around me and tell me that we can make some money. Did you ever try to get your hat back from her? I never thought no more about my hat because she taken my hat many times and would return it to me. Was she wearing your hat when you last saw her? When she taken it off my head, she put it on her head. Did she have it on her head when they took you home? I don't know whether she had it on then because I did not pay any attention to it. Did you see your hat at all that night after Viola had taken it? The only time I seen my hat is when I seen it in the police station when they showed it to me. Well, didn't you see it when the police arrested you out there? This was at the police station when they showed me the hat. They didn't show it to you when they first arrested you? Not to my knowing it, no. Now, incidentally, how much money did you have on your person when you were in the car with Mr. Horner after you drove him home. Well, I had a few dollars and some change. I may have had a dollar's worth of change. Maybe I had a little bit more even. Did you drive across any curb or on any lawn at all? No, I didn't. All right, so let's do that again at 140. 
some of the English is broken up, so just trust your notes. All right, here we go. Did he appear to you to be dead at that time? I didn't know whether he was dead or not. I didn't examine him. You just pushed him over in the front seat. Is that right? He was already in the front seat. He was sitting about middle ways. He was close to the steering wheel. So I pushed his body over so that I could get room to drive. Did you notice any blood on the floor in the back of that car? I did not even turn around to look in the car. I just drove the car. Did you notice your hat was in the car? I didn't know anything was in the car at all, but him and me. Now, when did Viola take your hat? She taken my hat the first time that she called me to come over. She threw her arm around me and tell me that we can make some money. Did you ever try to get your hat back from her? I never thought no more about my hat because she'd taken my hat many times and would return it to me. Was she wearing your hat when you last saw her? When she taken it off my head, she put it on her head. Did she have it on her head when they took you home? I don't know whether she had it on then because I did not pay any attention to it. Did you see your hat at all that night after Viola had taken it? The only time I seen my hat is when I seen it in the police station when they showed it to me. Well, didn't you see it when the police arrested you out there? This was at the police station when they showed me the hat. They didn't show it to you when they first arrested you? Not to my knowing it, no. Now, incidentally, how much money did you have on your person when you were in the car with Mr. Horner after you drove him home? Well, I had a few dollars and some change. I may have had a dollar's worth of change. Maybe I had a little bit more even. Did you drive across any curb or on any lawn at all? No, I didn't. Now you were walking towards the house when you noticed the policeman. Oh, I went too far. Sorry, I'm gonna stop there. My little, I didn't go into that last question on the last take. All right, let's do it again. Last time at 120, here we go. Did he appear to you to be dead at the time? I just, oh my gosh. Okay, take two. <laughs> oh, sorry. Take two of 120. Let's do it again. Oh, brother. Okay, here we go. Did he appear to you to be dead at that time? I didn't know whether he was dead or not. I didn't examine him. You just pushed him over in the front seat. Is that right? He was already in the front seat. He was sitting about middle ways. He was close to the steering wheel. So I pushed his body over so that I could get room to drive. Did you notice any blood on the floor? in the back of that car. I did not even turn around to look in the car. I just drove the car. Did you notice your hat was in the car? I didn't know anything was in the car at all, but him and me. 
Now, when did Viola take your hat? She take it on her head. Did she have it on her head when they Can you hear me? Now I can. It stopped. Like, after, yeah. Yeah, it stopped. The power like went off and then came back on. Oh, okay. Yeah, it stopped. Oh gosh. Yeah. Wow, this take, man. <laughs> I don't know what's up with this take here? <laughs> yeah, like, all of a sudden the everything just went off for a second. Oh, okay. Could you? It just stopped. I said, like, okay. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, do you want to let me, where did I, where, where did you last hear? Oh, what I, okay, let me go. The last thing I heard is on that one was, um, let's see here. Uh, let me see. Now, when did he, when did, when did Viola take your hat? Okay. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. All right. So then I now yeah. I'm going to the answer. Here we go. Thank you. Uh-huh. All right. She taken my hat the first time that she called me to come over. She threw her arm around me and tell me that we can make some money. Did you ever try to get your hat back from her? I never thought no more about my hat because she taken my hat many times and would return it to me. Was she wearing your hat when you last saw her? When she taken it off my head, she put it on her head. Did she have it on her head when they took you home? I don't know whether she had it on then because I did not pay any attention to it. Did you see your hat at all that night after Viola had taken it? The only time I seen my hat is when I seen it in the police station when they showed it to me. Well, didn't you see it when the police arrested you out there this was at the police station when they showed me the hat they didn't show it to you when they first arrested you not to my knowing it no now incidentally how much money did you have on your person when you were in the car with mr horner after you drove him home. Well, I had a few dollars and some change. I may have had a dollar's worth of change. Maybe I had a little bit more even. Did you drive across any curb or on any lawn at all? No, I didn't. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I we had an issue a couple it's probably been a couple of weeks but yeah, the power went out uh for about well, it was two different days, a Sunday and a Monday. Okay. A couple hours each time and our this I called Southern California Edison and they just said, "Well, you've got construction by you and it's it affected it." Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was just really funny. It was we were talking, I said, "Okay, what happened?" He just stopped. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, not again. <laughs> but, yeah, thankfully, it went right back on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it did. It was, it was you know, it didn't seem to be long. So that's good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and read this back. Okay. And uh, are you okay with, with, like, us rotating questioning? Sure, sure, sure. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll go ahead and go. Did you find your spot? Yeah, I did. Okay. So here we go. Did he appear to you to be dead at that time? Answer, I didn't know whether he was dead or not. 
I didn't examine him. Question, you just pushed him over in the front seat, is that right? Answer, he was already in the front seat. He was sitting about midways. He was close to the steering wheel. So I pushed his body over so I could get room to drive. Very good. Did you, now do you have middle ways or midways? I got middle ways. Okay, middle, good, good. I middle. Okay, okay, okay. Good. Okay. Good. All right, question. Did you notice any blood on the floor in the back of that car? Answer, I did not even turn around to look in the car. I just drove the car. Question, did you notice your hat was in the car? Answer, I didn't know anything was in the car at all, but him and me. Perfect. Question, now, when did Viola take your hat? Answer, she taken my hat the first time that she called me to come over. She threw her arm around me and tell me that we can make some money. Question, did you ever try to get your hat back from her? Answer, I never thought no more about my hat because she she'd taken my yep. hat many times and would return it to me. Very good. Question, was she wearing your hat when you last saw her? Answer, when she taken it off my head, she put it on her head. Question, did she have it on her head when she, when they, when she, wait a minute, when, let's see, when they, when they took you home? Yep, perfect. Okay. Answer, I don't know whether she had it on then because I did not pay any attention to it. Very good question. Did you see your hat at all that night after Viola had taken it? Answer, the only time I seen my hat is when I seen it in the police station when they showed it to me. Question, well, didn't you see it when the police arrested arrested you out there? Answer, this was at the police station when they showed me the hat. Question, they didn't show it to you when they first arrested you? Answer, not to my knowing it, no. Question, um, what is it, now initially? Yep, or no, incidentally. Oh, incidentally, that's what it is. How much money did you have on your person when you were in the car uh, with, uh, wait a minute, with, uh, when you were in the car, uh, I don't know what this is, drove him, drove him from home. Okay, do you have with Mr. Horner? Oh, yeah, okay. That's okay. And, okay, then I have drove him from home. Okay, drove yep. him to home. After you drove him home? After you drove him home. Yeah. Um, okay, and then the answer is, well, I had a few dollars and some change. I may have had a dollar's worth of change. Maybe I had, maybe I had a little bit, a little bit more even. That Perfect. It? Yep, that's it. Oh. I know this, this transcript read really weird. I think yeah. it was the way that the person spoke, you know? Okay. Uh, question, did you drive across any curb or on any lawn at all? Answer, no, I didn't. Right. Okay. Wow. And then incident, I write incident as S-D-E-N-T. So, oh, it, okay. yeah, because incident comes up almost as uh, much as accident, you know? Yeah. So how do you do accident? I do final X. Oh, okay. Okay. And then incident, I just do um, S-D-E-N-T. And then okay. you could incidentally, then I come back for L A E, or you could do L long E. Yeah. You know? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you you did you get my email? Yes, and I appreciate it. I thank you. I printed it out. I ran out. I'm reading over it. Okay. And, um, it's just it was so I responded. So. Um, oh, good. I, okay. Yeah. So, but no, I did print it out, and I just kind of realized, you know, we, I have been just practicing 
primarily poor boys, you know, trying to get, since I've been trying to pass this test after the 180s and so forth in school, there was really, you know, we didn't do a lot of um, uh, literary and a lot of jury charts. And when you said it's all, you, you, you do need it all. You just don't focus on poor boys. You know what I mean? Because you so you want to you want to pass the CSR. That's your thing. Right. You know, but when you said what you said, I never thought of it that way about the balance you needed. You need it all. And then I got a better understanding of how when within the practice sessions, you know, which when you got when you're reading at the various um session where literary and jury charge. It's always a part of it, right. and it's not right. just solely for voice, you know. Right. And right. it does. Uh, my under my I I I I was starting to realize that it helps with the writing. It gives you that balance, you know. And you know, it's I don't know, but yes, I did. I printed it out today, and I was going through a highlighting and just really taking heat because um, I'm gonna need to pass this test, you know. I know I can do it. Oh gosh, yes. But, you know, and just believing and um, seeing and I've taken it well more than I care to admit but um, it's a practice in learning a good foundation for practice you know what I mean and that was like thank you Lord that was when you said that I said okay I okay because I have been praying for that you know for guidance understanding on which way to go because it was something missing you know what I mean in my practice in my preparation so when you said that, I said the balance is just not one single thing to focus in on. Right. So, yeah. yeah. Right. Well, please feel free to call me if you okay. want to talk over the phone. I would, you know, we, I, we can go over a practice schedule and, okay. you know. Yeah, because that's what I want to go over with you uh -huh. because really, uh, like I said, I go to school on Monday, Wednesday nights. Okay. And so on Tuesday, you know, Thursdays and Fridays and on the weekend. And yeah, I'm up at 3.30 in the morning. Okay, wow. so I get up, I do my praying, then I walk, take a shower, and then I practice. So I can practice, I usually try to practice at least 15 minutes in the morning. I usually do some finger drills, and then I started doing the drills from one of the, one of the sessions, be it 180 or 190, just do the drills, and then I'm off on my way to commute to work. And then on Tuesdays, um, well, of course, I'm trying to do the live now. And then what I will try to do is maybe one of the live sessions or something, you know. And I also, because this last CSR, you know, it was some part, my fingers are all over the place because I just lost control of some of the words you just threw me. And I said, you got to get back control of your writing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And when you hear a word, don't, you know, to be able to key it, move on, you know, not stay stuck. Because I remember it was on page five. Oh, my gosh. I came to a certain part in it and I said, what is this? You know how you just, I mean, I, I, I remember, I just know that one part and I, I pushed on, I went through, I made sure I, much better. I finished it, I proofed it. I didn't do any creative writing, you know what I mean? Cause you do that. You yeah. end up adding yeah. more words than what really, it's one word, but you got, you add 10 words to make it look pretty. You yeah. Can't yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I'm going to make this test look pretty. And they didn't say all that. It's like, oh, no. And I oh, think they test. I, I think they do that on purpose just to yes, see. They do. Know. Because you just think, oh, they need an A. They didn't put an A. Yes. Yeah. Well, like and we just read, saw this read back was like can, weird. Yeah, can, yeah. That's what I said. Like you were just reading. I said, did he say that? He's, and, you know, to trust my notes. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's there. And you just, you know, because you're so the thinking and it's like lord help me in my thinking because you just so much doubting yourself you know that no this is not right this just cannot be right mm -hmm. and what i'm doing also i um in my email i told you i i type just about every i type at least three tests a week i correct them and i usually go through my notes and making sure you know i'm doing that so i was just wondering what would be good for me say for in the morning is that good the finger drills and the drills is that good and then you know doing one of the classes you know on um, thursday or friday you know friday and of course the weekend they have more time to do more stuff so those you know that's the kind of thing i was thinking well is that a good you know is that something good to um 
Oh yes, it definitely. And the morning, early morning yeah. drills are perfect because yeah. you're, you're, you know, you don't have a ton of time, but right. Right. drills are so important. So yeah. for accuracy. And, you know, I, and then another thing I was telling, I was telling my instructor, she said, Olivia, what do you think it was? I said, you know, it's not like the test is hard. What makes it a challenge is how the words, it's kind of the doublets. I'm really paying attention to the, those consonant compounds where it's forcing your fingers to go up. You know what I mean? Kind of like a tennis match. You at the net and you got to go back. And that's to me the best way I can say, so, you know, the words were individually, no, they were not. They were not. But when they, when they put them in that, where they were, you know, how they have them together, it's, it's forcing your fingers to go back in spaces that sometimes you don't want to go. It's like, don't say that word. It doesn't fit. My finger doesn't want to go there. So I'm really more conscientious. And like I said, in the drills, I love them because I love those, those doublers. I love those constant, con constant compounds. Yeah. But Jill, that's to me, the best way I can describe it is to be able to heal the, hearing those words, like, like you said about um, I hear you saying about unfamiliar words or words you don't like well yep. you said before you're going to hear those words you don't like mm -hmm. trust me they're going to come up again and again write them write them get a brief from so you you know what to do so you know um like i said i know page five was my page that there i'm sure there's others but there was just that part that i couldn't figure out and i said okay um you gotta you gotta get your solidify your writing get your theory down you know and uh, get, you know, and it helped when you suggested that when you said about the practicing the, the lit, the jury charge, because I had been away from it. I had, you know, we, we don't really get it, you know, and, and especially because you know how it is when you get a higher speed, some people, we don't need that anymore. We just want the four voice. That's the CSR. And little do we know. Yeah. You do need it. Yeah. 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 Like a balanced meal. Yeah. 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 Yeah, do, you have, yeah. do you have plenty of practice material as far as the drills go? You know, I've been using the drills on the, on the website here, you know, um, on the, on your, you know, Platinum Center. I just go to various ones. I go to the 170. I do the 160. I just, just drill, just Good. drill, drill. Yeah, Good. yeah. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah, because there's so much stuff. And i tell you the truth, even doing one over twice a week till you get it perfectly, it's, yeah. it's still... Yep. It's still because just doing it one time, more than likely you didn't get everything. Well, I didn't get everything, you know, a hundred percent. So we, you know, redoing it, redoing it and uh, then moving on, then coming back to it to yeah. make sure that I got it, you know? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. I'm so glad. Yeah. I'm so, yeah. Yeah. And even like today, you know, even if you have to come in late, that's okay. It's better oh, than yeah. nothing, you know? Yeah. And that's what I said when I was on the freeway. I said, you know what? I'll be late. I'll get 30 minutes. It's better than nothing. And you know, when you said you, you, you I think you had it in bold, you had a cap. I must live on that machine. And you know, truthfully, Jill, these are some of the things I've heard over and over again. But when you see that you've been at this for too long, you need to start to listen. Yeah. And stop and say, okay, this is real. You got to give it. I know it is. It's like toward the end there. I remember we went on a vacation. It was uh -huh. somebody's birthday and I took my machine and I was in the motel room practicing. Uh -huh. My family was like, you're crazy. Like, what are you doing? I go, look, yeah. I have got to get done with school. Like, yeah. I'm sorry if, you know what I mean? So I yeah. just started yeah. taking it. Well, I understand. I understand yeah. it now. And it just, it just clicked because yeah. when you said it, and I've heard it, don't get me wrong. I've heard it from other people. You got to live on that machine mm -hmm. and you know and, and, and woe is me whatever it doesn't matter because this is a skill and this is what it's going to be you know so, yeah um uh, yeah but um and once you get that piece of paper then you can take a breath and go yeah, oh. yeah so yeah. then i won't have to be commuting from Los. well it's going to be a minute before i'm able to quit my job that's for sure uh but i can work my way into transitioning out you know to working out in the inland em empire you know um, yeah well, and, uh, and i hear that the courts in la are begging people oh there are people they're taking them right out of school and that's right crazy when i was a i mean you when i got done with school you had that was in 94 uh -huh. you had to work your way to get into court like you sure, know yeah. they didn't just take no you know, 
no, it's so no. awesome that there's such a shortage. Yeah, exactly. And it's they like get done. Get done. Yeah, when yeah. I'm at the cast there. So, you know, it's unfortunate. You know, it wasn't a great pass rate this last one also. It's, it wasn't the greatest um uh, pass rate. Right. Um but um I and even with that, yeah, I don't even if one person did it, it shows me it can be done. Yeah. You know I mean, um it can be done. It requires right. work. Um uh, and that's what you gotta do. But um you sit and I think and I say, Lord, okay, I got it, this what do I need to do? And uh, uh when you hear, you know, you hear about going strictly into court. I had gone to uh DRA did a um, boot camp a few months ago, right before the CSR. And they had their various speakers and they had one lady from court. So you don't need that, you know, whatever the requirements, those they they're gone. We're taking you right out of school. So I said, okay, you know, but there you go. Got to do the work though. Yeah. And then your great paycheck yes. starts, yes. you know, <laughs> right there. Yes, 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 yes. So, yeah. But I really thank you. Thank you for taking the time. Right. Oh and please call me if you have any questions. If okay. Okay. Like, okay, now I want to. Now I, I want to talk about this, you know, okay. I have so many questions for you. So, but I will okay. check my email again and then, okay. you know, but yes, definitely. Cause I want to, okay. I was like, I, I wanted to paint the picture before I gave you. Oh no, no, you did. When you, you took the time and it was well understood. And like I said, I, I printed it out so that I could read over it. And when you went down, you did the bullet points like, okay, this is it. This is what you need to do. And it, it was clear. It was clear. It was, um, understandable i mean it was it was it was it was good you know okay. um, very helpful yeah. you're, you're gonna get it yeah yeah get and it. you know seriously you know and i said lord i can feel it i can feel it but put in the work and that's the thing you get tired and because you're so close to the end you know yes and you want to just uh i know you it's, yeah. it's that weary feeling of like i just want to be done you done. know yeah exactly 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 yeah Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so close. Yeah. Yeah. Hang in there and keep plugging away. I will. I will. I will. And thank you so much. And I will be sending you emails. Okay. Now, sounds good. Email, yeah. Oh, the email that I sent it to, that's okay. That will get to you, right? Because I, I, okay. Okay. Yep. Robert will pass it on to me. So, okay. Yeah, okay. So. Okay. Okay. But feel free to call me too or text me. Okay. Okay. So, okay. the number, okay. Is it, do I call you? I don't know. Is there a number here on the website that I can go to? To call you no no and i sent you my number on that did you get my number on that email no it wasn't on there oh had, it was let me see i have the email all right i'm not gonna tell you i printed it out and i have it here it's like here. <laughs> i'm gonna write you a message right here okay because in that way you'll have it okay seven two now can you okay. see that yeah, yeah. That. okay let me yes. let me okay let me hold on. okay i see it five four one seven two eight okay eight three four two okay i still have my oregon area code <laughs> i figured out the cell phone i don't have to change it anymore it's i know like i know i'm like okay what area code is that i thought it was 951 at first and i was like no that's 541 okay i you know okay. everybody always asks that where's that from <laughs> I'm like, okay and now and i'm gonna say no don't be nosy just write it just shut up and write it <laughs> it's oregon <laughs> okay 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 so, okay all, All right. right. Well, please feel free to text or call me and I sure will. I will respond to your email. But yes, okay. now, if you have any questions, you can just call and say, hey, I have a question here. Okay. 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 All righty. Okay. All right. All right. If, you, All right. if you need any more mater practice material, let me know because I can always, okay. uh, you know, email you some okay. material. But if, if you're listening to the to the class and that's great too so yeah 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 and that's what i've been doing because there's so much and of course you know it's new to me so it's, it's there's a lot so yeah yeah do you take yeah. your machine to work or is it just are you well, but you know what truthfully okay i use well, of course i'd usually take it on the days that i go to school but i really could take it every day i yeah. really yeah yeah because i mean i could give you some drill material that you could print out and then if, you know if oh. you don't access to like you know what i mean to watch something you could look at it oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes that would be great okay 
Okay. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. You know what? I'm gonna write, dude, you have my email address, I think, there, right? I do, yep. Yeah. Okay, all righty. Okay, yes, that would be great. Okay, and that way you can have that to, I mean, it, you know, it's, it, yeah. I mean, I think it's just as good. It, it's like, oh, it is. Yeah. 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 Because okay. you're still on it and you, yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. I've got all kinds of stuff, constant okay. compounds. Oh, yeah. That, you idea. know, that's what I was, you know, like I said, I, I, I when my, my instructor, Mary, she says, Olivia, what was it? I says, well, because it's so hard to pinpoint. Yeah. The first, of course, you know, you're the little words, okay? Working and like at the beginning of the sentence, and, oh my goodness, that, yes. you, you know, so, and it's like, okay, now when I'm, when I'm correcting my test here, I'm making sure I'm writing the and in there to force my brain to see it was there. Also during this time, I, I was realizing that stacking was still there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then a part of the question no, yeah. The beginning of the answer may be a part of the question is because I'm going so fast. Yeah. So what I was told is that, you know, you, by becoming more familiar with your notes, you would notice you will see those things. Yes. And, oh, my gosh. It's like, duh. It's it amazing. Like, yeah. What you can, if you get good at reading your notes, it's like, oh, that's, and, I typically do that. Yeah, and you do it. And it's, you know, yeah, you want to be perfect. You're not always going to do it that's right. right. Because, but you need to be able to see it. And okay. I tell you, when I print those notes out, it's like, oh my gosh, look at there. there. And it's so great now that when I'm correcting my test, I'm going back and I'm thinking I missed a word. No, you didn't. Mm -hmm. It's a part of that answer. That's where, I mean, it was a part of that question. You were, yeah. you know, so I'm, 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 I'm just, I'm learning so, so much, you know, about me and my writing habits and what the things that I do and, you know how, of course, when it's you on the group, you on it. It's like boom, boom. But then it comes that part when they they say something it's like what, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But that's the part you got to be able to boom, bam, and keep going. You know, but yep. it's a process, and I'm I'm getting there. It's coming. So um, yeah. you know, even the errors were less. But like I said, I know that page five, it was a killer for me. So I need to see those words and see how they were. You know how how what was it about them that just yeah are you going to request your test yes i did yeah. i did i did i did and what, and what i'll do is um um once they do it they usually um have it i'll scan it and i'll send it to you okay that would be okay. awesome then i can yeah. kind of go through and just say oh yeah okay this you know yeah like, yeah i i was talking to one of my friends who's a reporter and she was telling uh -huh. me she was really messing up on and uh huh. She's like, I just decided. Why don't I just write it A N D? So Is that and I thought, yeah, yeah. She just does A N D for and. Well, you know what? I was doing that, and then years ago, my theory instructor said, and do S K P. Uh huh. Yeah, that's that's how I write it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I have to hear it. You know what I mean? And I have to force myself. And by dropping down, going to the one fifties, going to the one sixty. It's forcing, it's training my ears to hear it because sometimes you get sloppy uh -huh. when it's so slow that your mind starts to, eh, you know, so yes. bring it in. So, yeah, yeah it yeah. is. It, there's, it, it is. It's, it's again, like that getting all your vitamins, you know, it's like the right. trail is so important. The push is important. Your exactly. speed and yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 And it, you just got to know when and to change because sometimes yeah. what, you know, so. But yeah, yeah cause this time around, I said, no, this is preparation. What are you going to do? Continue to do that, but trying to up your game and get ready for it. So that's mm -hmm. what I'm doing. Good so, for you. Yeah. So. Good for you. Well, but, yeah, I, I would appreciate that drill stuff and I, yeah. uh, I'll put them out and um, I will thank do you that. for listening and thank you for sharing. Okay. Oh gosh. You are welcome. You are <laughs> welcome. And I'm call me or text me anytime. Okay. okay. All right. Good night. You too. Okay. Bye. Okay, bye. 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 -bye.